Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing. Today, we're gonna give you an update on the coronavirus and what's happening worldwide, and specifically what's happening in the United States. So last week, we had a tragic, surprising death of Kobe Bryant, an NBA legend. Someone whose basketball skill I tried to deny because I'm such a huge Michael Jordan fan, but honestly, he's probably the greatest or the second greatest player to ever play the game. This week, I've been wearing his shoes every single day. I have many pairs of Kobe Bryant's, the Nike time of Kobe Bryant, and I just admire him as a basketball player, and I admire him more as a father. He died with his daughter, and it's unfortunate that he died with his daughter and seven other people who live in Orange County. I've had neighbors that have been personally affected by the deaths of these people. It's unfortunate this had to happen. And my heart goes out to all of the families that are going through such a tough time. For me, what I've decided to do is take eight seconds every day to just take a deep breath and appreciate being here and being in the situation that we're in. Loving my kids, loving my family, and I want you guys to do the same. So for Kobe Bryant, let's take eight seconds here of silence, and for the rest of the families that were affected by this tragic news, we're gonna have eight seconds of silence and then move forward. So moving forward into the coronavirus, we're gonna, I'm gonna remind you guys what the coronavirus is. So what is the coronavirus? So it's an RNA virus that infects airway epithelial cells. We're gonna go into a little bit more detail here. When you look specifically at the coronavirus and its genetics, it's actually related to a SARS-like virus from that region of China. Now, when we go into it even further, what does that mean? So remember before when I talked about the virus and how viruses, if you look at a ball and if it's shaped like a ball, they have different proteins attached to the ball on the outside, right? This is like their cell membrane. These proteins are what are responsible for binding to cells and actually fusing with the cell's membrane to get inside the cell, borrow the cell's DNA and to replicate itself. So a SARS virus binds to airway epithelial cells more specifically the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor that's expressed on airway epithelial cells, the MERS virus bound to CD26. CD26 is a molecule that's present on T cells. So remember, T lymphocytes are cells that will either directly kill a cell that's infected with a virus, or they're cells that will help B cells generate antibodies to fight infection. So that's why those infections are so severe because of the cells that they actually infect. So let's think about this. The coronavirus actually binds to a specific receptor in airway epithelial cells. This receptor is called the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor, which is present on airway epithelial cells. So it binds to this receptor just like the SARS virus did. And after it binds to this receptor, which is done with the spike protein, it fuses with the cell membrane and that's how it infects our cells. That's probably why it causes pneumonia and respiratory illness because that's the cell that it binds to. Thinking about it even further, you've heard this bats, like what do bats have to do with the coronavirus? Well, here's what they have to do with it. Bats are a reservoir for coronavirus. In other words, coronavirus infects bats. But to infect humans, especially since this started around December when bats are hibernating, you have to have an intermediate host. For example, in the SARS virus, the intermediate host was a civet cat, right? It's a type of mammal. In the MERS virus in the Middle East, the intermediate host was the camel. So in other words, in an intermediate host, an infectious organism can kind of hang out and chill out in the intermediate host until it's able to infect the host, right? Either the bats again or human beings, which is what happened in this case. All right, so now let's move forward to numbers. So what are the actual numbers of coronavirus to this day? So as of this morning, 
in the United States, there are only eight confirmed infections, only eight confirmed infections. We have about 114 negative tests, and then we have about 120 tests that are pending thus far. All right, so the last infectious case was discovered this morning in Boston, right? And today is February 1st, 2020. Okay, so those are the numbers. Now in China, we have over 12,000 cases of coronavirus with about 250 that have died. So the death rate is about 2%, right? 12,000 cases, 250 people have died. It's about 2% death rate. And that's what people are worried about. That's why the World Health Organization is worried and has declared an emergency. That's why the CDC is worried and has declared a little bit of an emergency. Even though no one, no one, no one outside of China has died, we're still worried about it. When you think about how can you get infected with the coronavirus, here's how you get infected. First of all, it's important to know the incubation period. What the incubation period means is it means that at which point you're exposed and how late you can display symptoms of the infection. The incubation period for the coronavirus is about three to 14 days. That's why I'm in Southern California. We have people at the March Air Force Base being quarantined and they're gonna be quarantined for two weeks just to see if they display symptoms of the coronavirus. In terms of getting infected, what we consider serious risk factors are being within six feet of someone who is coughing because that's how it spread respiratory droplets, who is coughing a lot and producing mucus, being within six feet or being in an isolated room with them for a significant period of time without the appropriate protection material, which would include gloves, gown, and what's called an N95 mask that's sealed really well around your mouth and your nose here on your skin and creates a really tight seal. What hospitals are doing and what I had to do the other day was I had to go to an infectious class and get refitted for an N95 to make sure it fit my face appropriately. That's why they put a hood on you and they make you wear this N95. They spray some bitters through the hood and they ask you if you can smell or really if you can taste the bitters. And if you can taste the bitters, you're gonna have to change the size of your mask. So again, that is the update about coronavirus, okay? Eight people in the United States have been infected. About 120 are pending. Worldwide, no one has died outside of China, but in China, you have over 12,000 people who have been infected with about 250 deaths. Who knows if the numbers are accurate, but these are the numbers that we have to this day. So now everyone talks, how can you protect yourself from this novel coronavirus? Well. Here are some strategies to protect yourself. Number one is if you're around somebody that may be infected with the coronavirus, you wanna get fitted or have an N95 mask. We talked about that previously. Also, you wanna to not touch your eyes or your mouth or your nose with unwashed hands. We all know that most of infection is spread because of our dirty ass hands. So let's think about this. We have to wash our hands and I tell my children, my children are seven and almost five years old. They come home with dirty hands every single day. The first thing they got to do when you enter the Rutland household is wash your hands. Use soap, scrub your hands together. You have to scrub them together for about 20 seconds because this will get rid of all of the viruses and all of the bacteria that get stuck to your hands and wash them down the drain and you're less likely to spread infection. The other thing is you don't want to be within six feet of these people that might have coronavirus without your protection. How do you know if you may have coronavirus? Well, if you traveled from Wuhan and you have fever, if you have cough, if you're short of breath, you need to get tested. Go to a local emergency room, go to a local urgent care, tell them that you think you may have coronavirus so that that hospital and that that healthcare team can take the appropriate measures and they will test you. What they'll probably end up doing is they'll call the CDC and they'll ask them how they should test these people for novel human coronavirus. Typically speaking, they're gonna look for RNA elements of the virus within your mucus. They might get a deep tissue sample of your throat and even of your lung to be able to run this specific test. But if you're having those symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, not feeling well, and you've traveled from that area, you definitely need to get tested. So in conclusion, in regards to the coronavirus, it's a SARS-like virus. 
It infects airway epithelial cells as a result of binding to the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor on airway epithelial cells. In the United States, we have eight confirmed infections as of February 1st, 2020, this morning. In terms of deaths worldwide, we have over 250 deaths in China, but worldwide we don't have anyone that has died outside of China. That's the quick update in regards to coronavirus. In terms of therapies, depending on the institution in which you are working, they may provide antiviral medicines. It depends on how sick the person is. Most of the time, as I mentioned in my previous YouTube, it's about your immune system responding to the infection. Your immune system has to recognize that the infection is present. It'll manufacture antibodies, and then those antibodies will neutralize the cells that are infected and then clear the infection. That process alone takes anywhere from seven to 14 days because that's how long it takes for your immune system to manufacture those antibodies. Now, we're gonna move on to influenza, which again, I know it's been hammered and I know it's been beating you to death, but that infection affects more people, not only worldwide, but in the United States. So the unfortunate thing about coronavirus is we don't know, so we're scared. 12,000 people in China have this virus, 200 have died, 250 have died. That's what's scary because we don't know it and we're worried about it and I understand that and it's important to study that and look at that but it's also important to pay attention to influenza. I appreciate you guys joining me today. Please join me again. There's other videos here that are posted. Watch those videos, let me know what you think. Enjoy your week. I hope you guys take care and remember what I always say, be better today when compared to yesterday. Thanks for joining. Trick Jamie.